Hello everyone, this is Fabian Christin and today I wanted to make a short video about the new features coming with Photographer 3.5. First I would like to talk about 3.4. I didn't make a video because there was no new feature, but there is a big change in the behavior of the physical light that I wanted to talk about. And this concerns the unit scale. So before the uh, physical light unit like Lumen and Candelas and Artistic as well, they were not affected by the unit scale. So they were only working if the unit scale was one. And then if you would change this one for something else, it would just be completely wrong. So what Blender does by default is when you change the unit scale, um, it just changes the power value of your light as well. So it keeps the same visual look, but it just like updates your value in your in your lights in all your lights so that's gonna be working um, in the power and the power advanced and now if you're using lumens and you imagine that uh, you decided that this lamp should be 13,660 so you say like this is my value this is how it should look now if you change your your unit scale it's gonna be wrong because your unit scale pretty much say that this column um, that used to be like 4.86 meters high is now uh, actually like two meters. So your light, if it has this intensity, it should be brighter, right? So photographer will let you know that you need to reapply the settings. And as you reapply them, it will make them brighter. And that would be correct. That's the same for Candela. It's gonna work flawlessly for your new scenes if you have a unit scale and you save it in your startup scene. But if you change your scene after you have done your lighting, then that might be a problem to have to convert everything so there are uh, an option in the preferences here in the light ui um, you have the follow scene unit scale and you can decide if uh, you should apply that change so maybe if you don't want to convert your old scene you could just turn it off entirely or it, also if you don't want to have to go through all your lights manually and press the apply setting uh, you can just like turn it off and turn it on again and it will just apply the new settings uh, for, for all your lights in the scene. So just so you know, be careful when you open new old scenes, I would say disable it. Um, it's going to be enabled by default, but please disable it. But for any new scene, it's just going to work flawlessly for you if you use something else than one here. And now let's talk about Photographer 3.5. We have a couple of new features. Uh, so here in the photographer panel you will notice that you have this new button here on each camera which is add camera target and if you're familiar with maya this is like the camera and aim uh, system so for instance if i create a new camera from from this angle and let's say that i wanted to uh, target the statue and then when i move my camera it will like keep looking at a statue so now i can just Click on this one, it will go into a model where I can just click on an object in the scene and it will create a camera target which will be the center of your frame always. And now if I, um, let's go to another view here, just remove that. And now you can see my camera. And then if I start moving it, you will see that it keeps looking at the statue, or actually at the target. And uh, this is the same way as uh, the AF tracker. So this one, you can move it around, but it's also going to be parented to the object that you uh, clicked on when, when you placed it. So if your object moves, it's going to move as well. If you want to undo that, you can just like select the target and then press Shift P and clear parent. And now you can see that uh, this is not parented to the object anymore. You can just use it like this. But I like having uh, something attached to the object. I think it's uh, pretty cool. You can do it uh, for every camera. So also like you can do it for the cameras without having to look through them. So if I, if I for instance, uh, get out of this and I just, uh, on this camera, so you should look here, then you saw that this one got updated and started to look at this position. I can just delete it very easily with this button. Now we have the other feature, which is uh, the render queue. You have a new panel here, and you may have noticed that we have checkboxes here, and those checkbox means that your camera is renderable for the render queue. 
you have two buttons. It's pretty obvious. It's um, similar to Render Burst. I don't know if you've used it. It's an add-on from the, the cool guys at uh, Creator Shrimp. So it's based on their work. I've just modified it to make sure that it works with Photographer because their add-on didn't apply all the settings for Photographer, so this one does. I also like improved it and, and added some cool features like incremental, which I will talk about. So what you um, can see is that it tells you how many cameras are going to be rendered, uh, depending on the checkboxes here. And then the render active only is going to be the, the scene camera. So if you don't have a scene camera, just clear that up a bit. If you don't have a scene camera, if I remove it here, then I cannot render active only, but you can still render all the cameras um, in a row. This one is a crap camera. That's the one I created just before I'm going to remove it. I'm just going to use these two cameras. And what I can do is that I can just render active only. And the difference with the usual like F12 render from Blender is that it's going to save the file with the camera name. So you see here, I have my path and I have my, my folder. Um, for instance, I can just add a new folder. This one, just put a backslash, is very important. And uh, I will just render active only. And now you'll see that it's going to render my current scene camera. And uh, you see here that it adds like the camera name and then it also added the 001. And this is coming from this incremental uh, option here. So every time I'm going to re-render this, it will just increase the number to make sure that you're keeping like a history of your renders. You can turn it off. And if you turn it off, it's going to render your camera uh, with the camera name. So every time you're going to render this camera, it will just save this camera underscore close and it will just overwrite that file. So. That's why I like it a bit more than uh, the, the default F12. And also what's cool is that you can assign a shortcut. So if you want to replace because you think it's a better behavior, then that's cool with me. And then the best is, of course, the render all camera. So as you see, I have two cameras. And uh, if I render all cameras, I will just go through the first one and then the second one right after. And you can see that it, they have different uh, resolutions, they have different exposure and white balance settings, and all of them are properly applied between the two. And the same thing is going to save them under an incremental name. So you can just re-render them, and it will just make sure that it doesn't overwrite the one that was rendered before. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really... I'm happy that uh, a user actually recommended RenderBus because I didn't know about it. And uh, I think it's a great addition to Photographer. And something I wanted to talk about very quickly because I, I never talked about it in a video is the uh, lens uh, tilt. Uh, people have been asking all the time and I keep telling them like, but it's already in Photographer. So maybe it hasn't been cleared. But when you have a camera like this, um, I think it's nice because it's uh, like a architecture and everything but there is something that is kind of annoying is that as you see the camera is tilted a bit and that means that all the vertical lines are not parallel anymore uh, there is like a perspective what you do in architectural render is um, you actually use a lens tilt like this to fix the perspective and what you want to do is to make them uh, automatically parallel right so that's what this automatic tilt does if you Go back to zero you're going to see like these ones are not parallel automatic tilt they are parallel now so it's there with photographer 3 if you're doing argvis renders i think you're gonna love it and that's it for this video thank you for watching and see you next time